Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. This is Eric from the MMG. Today I'm going to show you how to set up your own dedicated server on Windows for The Front, which is a new first-person shooter survival game. I do want to mention this is one of the harder setup ones, so if you're not familiar with this process, please make sure you watch the video and follow it very closely. Sometimes, you know, watch it a second time may help because it's easy to miss a small step along the way. Uh, you do need to forward ports on your firewall and your router. If you don't know how to do that, I'm not going to show that in this video because everybody has different routers. Your Windows firewall, though, I actually made a video. You can look for it on my channel, which will show you how to do it on that. But you do, most importantly, need to do it on your router. So you're going to have to you know, Google some steps for whatever the model is of your router and how to forward ports because you're going to have to forward several ports to get this game to work. If you can't do that step, then nobody on the outside is going to be able to connect. So you're just going to kind of waste your time and get very frustrated. Trust me, I've been there and done that myself. So first things first, we're going to start on the dedicated server. So this is the machine that's going to run the server itself. That's how this whole video is going to work. This is not going to be you hosting and playing on the same machine. Um, that's actually built into the game itself, so you don't actually even have to do it that way. And we're going to use Steam CMD. So just go to your server like I have here, type in Steam cmd hit enter and right here should be the first link and we're going to be downloading it for windows right here so click here and then one more time this little one is the download download it for windows so click that and it should download for you because there it is right there now you're going to want to extract it i recommend you put this in an easy to find location for yourself um, i have mine directly on my c drive and i created a little shortcut here that opens it up. So mine is on C drive and I created a folder called Steam CMD. Once you extract it, there will be one file in here, I believe, and it's just called Steam CMD. That's normal if you've never used it before. Um, if you have used it, your folder will have a lot of stuff in it like mine has. That's normal too. So just uh, go ahead and double click on it to execute it. If it's the first time, it's going to download a bunch of files and fill up your folder a little bit here. You do need to be an admin on this server too, by the way. I forgot to mention that. So make sure you're an admin. Um, otherwise, it, you're going to run into some problems. You, you might have to right click and tell it to run as an admin sometimes. It's so, But just being an admin directly logged in as an admin is the easiest way to do this. So once this is done downloading, you should be at a command prompt that is blinking. It says Steam right here. So I've created a dot bat to make this very easy. But I'm going to take you through the steps real quick. You just need to do login and then space anonymous. Hit enter, and it's going to log you in that way. Now you need to, to just do the game. So app underscore update space, and then the ID for the game itself. All right, the number you want to enter is 2612550. And mine's already updated. If, it, if you don't have it installed yet, it's going to start downloading all the files for the server. All right, and once that's done, you can just type in exit to get out of there. So now you should have in your folder back here, I'm going to go back a step, created a file called the frontupdater.bat. You want to edit that real quick. I'm going to show it to you. I also I highly recommend Notepad++. It's free. Um, so this right here, what this does, is it does all the steps we just did a second ago automatically for you. So this will quickly update your server. Um, I'll put this code in the video description so you can just copy it. All you need to do is make it into a file here. And it has to be in the folder where steamcmd.exe is because um, that's just how I have it set up. So I don't have it pointing. So you just want to go new. You want to do a text document. And then like mine's called the front updater. Front updater. And then you want to actually delete the dot text. You want to make it a dot bat, a dot bat. And it'll ask if you're sure you want to do that. Hit yes. Now, if, if yours doesn't do that and it says a dot bat dot text, that's because you need to go up here to view and turn on file name extensions right here. So put a check right here and then you can add, you can change it like I just did right there. Nice and easy. All right. So once you have this and you have that code copied from my description in here, um, all you have to do is run it. So let me I'm going to get rid of this one so I don't get confused. I'm going to run mine down here and watch. It's going to open a command. It's going to log me in anonymous like I just showed you to do manually, and then it's going to do an update. So it's pulling down the latest files for the server. And so anyways, th that's how you can update the server when they put out a new update or patch. So your files themselves, though, are going to be up here in a folder called Steam Apps. 
common the front dedicated server right here also do want to mention this game's kind of cool because it actually has some some files that you may be missing on your server here it's got the DirectX update and uh, .NET update and the visual update right here. So if you're getting some kind of weird error, make sure you run these updates to get to get your server updated to the latest version. Those are required. Um, you can get the .bat from the Windows updates, so you might already have that. But if you don't have the other ones, it's right there too, which is really nice. All right, so we're going to go back into the front dedicated server from here. And um, so now this is, this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. So now you have to pivot away from your server, and we're going to go into the computer that we're going to actually play the game on. Then you're going to launch the front, just like the, I'm doing here. All right, so once you have it launched, you should be at this screen here, and you want to actually tell it to create a dedicated server. It's going to pop you up a menu. You need to fill in all these blanks here, and you can actually go through and do all the personal server settings that you want here if you want, if you want to specialize it. So you want to fill all this in. You can change your ports. This is the where you can make what ports you want to use. Um, we're just going to use defaults in this video here, but you can change them if you need to. Put a password. Uh, put your server name in there. All the fun stuff. And once you have this filled out, hit start server. And then it's going to pop up a, another window right here where it shows you the actual server files and the .bat that it just made for you, which is perfect. So this is the start server .bat. You want to actually... You want to copy a bunch of files here, to be honest. So what what I would do, I would just grab this. Really, the only file I wouldn't, I know you don't need is the frontmanager.exe. But if it's easier, just start and just grab all the files here. Not that you don't need the folders, and you don't need most of these, but just to make it easy, we're going to grab them all. So you want to copy all of them. Now you're going to pivot back to your server, and you want to go to the main directory here. So the front dedicated server folder in your Steam CMD folder right here. See, look at the address, make sure you're in the right spot. And then you wanna copy, you wanna paste all the files in here. And I'm gonna, I'm not, I've already done this, so I'm not gonna do a bunch of duplicates, right? But you wanna paste, you wanna put all these in here because there's some missing DLLs that you need. Now I don't need this, this is the one I said I don't need, I'm gonna delete it. Okay, so now you've done that step. And you also should have the dot .bat in here that it, we just created now. So let's find that dot .bat. It's right there, start server dot .bat. And then we're going to go into edit it. So there's a couple fields that you have to edit. Oops, I want to open it with Notepad++. I opened the wrong one. Okay, so there's this. And there's a couple things you want to change. I'm going to make, th make this a little bigger so we can see it here. Start from the beginning here. So this is it. it. So you want to make sure this right here that it's calling is correct. Whoops. I hate, I hate that it does that. So... You want to make sure that where from from the locate what this means here this dot slash is meaning from where this file is located it's then going to go into project war folder binaries win64 and then it's going to launch the front server.exe now if you have done you, you need to make sure this is correct so what i would recommend you do is come out here back to where your dot bat is and you want to see there's the project war folder that's calling binaries was the next win64 and then there's the front server exe that's calling and so if yours is different go up here to your bar and you can select it and then copy the address see that address right there it's the full address then you want to go back into your dot bat and paste it in here so start start from right here where this this is and then you want to paste it in right here that full address that will get you wherever your the front server.exe is calling it from. So mine's correct already. Yours might not be correct depending on your file structure, but you, you need to make sure that's pointing to that location. So I'm just going to show you an example here. I'm just going to paste it in there real quick. There, there's what it should look like for you, and that will actually work for me too. I just, I just shortened it, but I'm going to go ahead and put it back the way it was because it was working for me. But okay, next thing you need to do is you want to keep scrolling down here. This is where you can change Mac server. People, how many people you want on your server? 100. You need to leave all this alone. Uh, config server name, you want to change that to whatever you want. Where the MMG. Uh, this stuff I would just leave all alone too, unless you happen to know what it does. I don't. All right, once you get that changed, you need to keep scrolling down. There's a couple more. The next one we're going to change is the alt IP address equals. This needs to be your external 
IP address. If you don't know what that is, just go to Google and say, what is my IP? And it will pop up and tell you what your external IP address is. You need to put that in right here. So I'm just going to put external IP. Um, you know, yours is going to be something, you know, 3521671111 or something like that. That's, that's the format it's going to look like, right? Whatever your external IP address is. That's what you need to put in there. The next thing you need to, ha to change is this user directory. Now, this is going to be, since we copied it from the .bat from our other machine that we're playing on, this is going to be a completely different address. So you need to make sure you get this changed. It's very, very important. So what I recommend that you do is you create a directory in your C drive, Steam CMD, the front, front manager, and then you just make this folder right here. And this can be anywhere. You can simplify. You can make it shorter. You can put it, you know, right inside the Steam CMD folder if you want. You just need to put the address in right here so it knows where it's going to save. So that's going to be where it saves the user information. All right. And then keep going down here. This is where you set your server password. So put in your password or whatever you want it to be. Your server name right here. And at the very end, oh, your ports. Here are your ports. You can adjust if you don't want them default. Here they are. And at the very end is going to be, this should be already in there from when you made your first server. This should be your Steam UID or whatever it's called. GUID, I forget what they call it in Steam. But it's your number that's associated with your Steam account. And that's going to give you admin privileges on the server itself. So. All right, once you have all those things changed, you want to make sure you hit file and save as, right? You don't want to not save it. And then you should be good to go to start your server. You're going to double click on the server, start server.bat. It's going to pop up this window here eventually. And this could take longer depending on the speed of your uh, server and everything. So be patient. Um, it's going to take at least probably a minute or two to get fully booted back in and up. All right, once the server is up and running, you gave it a couple of minutes to fully load. Um, maybe a little bit longer, just depending on your system, like I said. You want to open up the front, back on the ser uh, the machine that you're going to play the game on, not on your server. And you want to click on the Servers tab here. You want to click on Dedicated Server, because that's what we made. And then you're going to want to search for whatever you named your server. Ours is the MMG. We're going to hit Enter. There she is, the server that we made. I'm going to click on it. It's going to ask you to connect, put in whatever password that you set. Hit confirm, and you should be at a menu like this. And if you haven't created a character, this is what you want. You want to hit create, put your name in there, and hit confirm, and there is your character. Now you hit the start button to load into the game. If you do happen to get an error when you're trying to create this, I had this happen to me. That just means your directory that you set up for the user folder, which I showed you, is not there. So you just, like I said, you need to go in there and create that if it's not there. All right, the last thing I want to show you is how to actually shut the server down. So we're going to pivot back to the server itself. And you have this little command console here, and it's showing you where, you know, here it is. You just need to click in the window itself and then hit Control C. And you sometimes you have to hit it a couple times. I don't know why. I just hit it twice. And then you should see it start to initiate the shutdown. And there it exited. That's how you properly shut down your server, and it saves it beforehand and everything like that. So, all right, hopefully this video helped you. I would greatly appreciate it if you'd hit that subscribe button that helps me keep growing the community here and keep making these videos. Thanks for watching, and have yourself a great day.